ladies and gentlemen it's your boy now to wait the dig dug himself robo fiends i'm back again with another build video and today we're looking at <sighs> i didn't actually quite give him a name essentially though the whole purpose of this build is support and for those of you who are dedicated enough to the game you would note right off the bat that there's riot light 2 and riot light 1 in both hands on the back, we're looking at a laser cannon and the other parts you probably can't tell off the jump, but nevertheless, I think you kind of know what I'm going for here. This is a laser energy build. However, this build will be relatively gimmicky. This isn't a build that you would usually use in a 1v1, more in a 2v2 type of scenario as a support. The purpose of this build, obviously, is to stun your opponent and then go in with a laser cannon. Why did I choose this? It's because I wanted to have fun with it. I realized that early on, I was being too serious in my builds, making things extremely optimal, knowing that's not essentially who I am. And I like to make builds that are very, very flexible, so that way you as the player could go in and do your own thing, and essentially put in what you would like in it, add your own flair to it. Nevertheless, this is my gimmicky, stun lasery energy build. Let's take a gander. Okay, so going off the jump, of course, we're going to look at the legs. Now the legs here is a relatively decent leg. I like to use it from time to time. It's the uh, Raikari legs. These are the essentially the fastest legs in the game. The only reason as to why I chose this one is and boost speed. The problem with these legs though is that they're very weak in a lot of things is they're really weak in durability the memory usage is relatively okay but they, they they can't really hold a heavy ac if you will if that makes any sense to you if you start to pound on or put on the equipment and the equipment tends to be a bit heavy you will lose your speed relatively quickly so that 15k speed right there will drop off to where we're we at right now we are at 12k we're at 12k because i'm loaded down with stuff and it can't necessarily hold up the weight but nevertheless, I think 12k is fine. The light boost speed isn't exactly what I would want it to be, but we're going to talk about why that's not the case in a minute. Nevertheless, we're looking at the Rikari legs. Again, all these builds are based on like 100% base model stuff. You can go in here and change things how you want. You can actually add attachments if you want. You want more of this, you want more of that. I'm just kind of showing you the raw build itself. Now, the base legs of the Rikari build what we're using right here. Uh, the lock on time essentially isn't too, too bad. Uh, the laser defense is kind of bad, but the bullet defense is good, which is fine, which is par for the course, which I knew it would actually become. It'd be really good on the on the bullet defense uh, because most people use bullets anyway. Not a lot of people tend to use lasers or things like that, even later on in the heavy PvP joint. So uh, until the laser starts to show up a bit more prominent, we will probably make a lot of our builds geared towards the bullets until people start to switch it up. Because essentially right now there's only two different uh, damaging types, whereas an armor core five there was three and chemical Chem people use chemical and kinetic a lot because gatling guns were heavy and battle rifles were heavy and then if you caught people slacking on the the thermal builds you got completely washed nevertheless let's keep it moving so with the arms uh the left arm we're looking at radiant gleam now radiant gleam i chose for to give us a bit more durability uh, the defense is essentially quite equal. So I was trying to equal out your defenses here. Now, really what I really wanted from this one was the firing support. It was good on terms of fire rate support, shot delay support, reload support. Um, I felt like those were really decent. The precision was really nice as well. It's very middle of the road in terms of the arms because uh, I knew I wanted to be able to specialize in one thing over the other and I would essentially lose a lot of durability over it because I really wanted to give you guys a bit more longevity while also being relatively viable. So I feel like if I'm splitting hairs and I really got to go right down the middle in half, I feel like Raiding Gleam will probably be the best one for me, doing parts of its ability to give me essentially a good measure of stats in all things, but not a great measure of stats and everything else. Jack of all trades, if you will. A little on the heavier side, um, and compared to other more specialized arms, it's not as good, but it has durability backing it up. So that's a good point in my book. On the other side, we're looking at Durandal. This is probably, honest, I hate to admit it, but this is probably one of my favorite pieces of gear in the entire game. The name, anyway, Durandal. I love it because a lot of their gear I tend to use in a lot of my other builds uh, because it's just so good. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's 
specializes in relatively decent defenses more so on the laser defense side again i'm trying to split the hairs and get it nice and tight for you guys um but honestly it's the shot delay support that i really really wanted shot delay support the precision support of course now i could have just doubled up on the radiant gleam but i felt like i would be losing out in terms of memory usage and weight they are a bit more on the easier side if that makes any sense uh and i didn't really want to actually do that because uh later on you'll understand that you have to try to split a lot of your your memory uses down the middle and half because um you will probably run into a memory problem when trying to run these weapons exactly because they are very 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 drain happy nevertheless uh Durando, i tend to really like using it because it's very good in terms of the not so much the reload support it didn't necessarily have to be but i really wanted for uh, essentially everything else it could do the shot delay support really i want the fire rate support is not the best but it's honestly one of the things out there just for a, a, a excuse me a defensive a defensive type of role that doesn't give me a lot of memory drain in the back there now my processor we're gonna look at aim assist why aim assist aim assist is kind of broke with this because since we're using art guns they don't necessarily have the best trajectory well the range and the trajectory among other things as other guns I went with aim assist because it'll help us land our shots that we do have to land on target. Uh, simply put, it's a little harder to actually run this build because I mean, I was get I, when I was practicing with it, I was getting smashed. I was like, why am I getting smashed so hard? So I, I went back to drawing board, changed my processor, and this actually helped me uh, land a couple more of my stuns more often. So I feel like the aim assist is a little it's a little od it's a little od, but it'll get the job done. And moving to the body, now we're going with Durando again. The reason why I'm going with Durando and we're not going with the Hecaton is because even though the Hecaton is essentially the greatest core in this entire game, it doesn't have the memory usage that we need. Now, or well, the memory capacity, excuse me, that we need. The memory capacity is based solely on your core. However much memory capacity your core has is however much memory capacity you have all day and limits what weapons you can and cannot put on this build. Now, I had to find one that wasn't complete crap. It had relatively decent speeds in the sky because we all know uh, Hecaton has the, the most godlike of 17k in the sky. Granted, the, the actual speed itself is low, but no one is not just flying in the air. People are boosting in the air. So the flight speed is 100% trash and it's 100% useless. That is a useless stat. No one cares about your flight speed. It's about your flight boost speed. Nevertheless, the Darandal one was the one closest to having comparable speed, which is a huge 8,000 point gap while also having the total memory capacity that would really suffice to make this build viable. On top of having a bit of a defense here, there, and then there, there. So it's a, it's a solid core. Uh, one, one of, not necessarily one of my favorites, but if I had to not pick Hecaton, I probably would pick this one. Uh, defenses are well durability is relatively good i think hecaton has it i think in defense yeah Dur uh hecaton has it in, in defense but uh, at about 5k defense it's not too too bad well excuse me durability is not too too bad uh, on top of the defenses like the laser and the bullet defense is okay the stamina recovery is it's okay it's okay it's fairly good i like it, it, it it's you no know, it's good it's it's a good it's good um the other resistance is not so much so burns done and acid uh you're probably susceptible to getting smacked really really hard one thing is going to be a bit of an issue is that if your opponents are running the hecaton which they most probably are they might have a bit more stun resistance to what you would have if you take gander down there it's not too too much more but uh it's a bit more than let's say they were trying to run something else however if they're on the the, the swifter side using things like flamberg phantom no Okay, if they have a Flash Phantom, it's curtains. If they're super duper quick and you try to stun them, odds are it's not going to happen. That stun resistance is godlike, but if they're not, if they're running more of the Hecaton, the running more of, let's say, like Flamberg was also kind of quick, um, a few other of these things, then you might be able to get away with it. But if they are running the, there's a couple of these cores, they're running a couple of these cores, then the odds are you're not going to be able to stun them. Spotting out which core they might have off the jump is going to be a little bit more difficult. But you would notice when it takes more than three seconds of continuous fire to stun them, and if that's the case, then they're probably gonna run. They're probably running a build that actually has a, quite a bit of stun resistance. So um, it pays to understand and notice and un and what it pays to know <laughs> what armor, what core they're running by just sight alone. You can be like, oh, that's that's this core or that's that core. Have have this ability to know what what is on sight. It would help out with this build. 
Lastly, we're looking at the Atlas head. A great head. Um, take that for what you will. <laughs> great durability is really what I was going for here. I just wanted some durability. The the radar detection range is nice. The lock on range is nice. The lock on time is average. Um, everything else is kind of there. It was essentially a head that I was wanting more in terms of defense to make it for the the defense that we don't really get from the legs and some from the arms. So that way we can just live a little bit longer and honestly this one isn't that bad in terms of sight range and uh and target range and whatnot i feel like those are very decent numbers but um it's okay it's okay it's not bad i would probably more often not run durandal that is definitely my my go-to head giggity giggity uh but because it has better like lock on and range and things like that those those are sets i really care more uh more about but Honestly, if you're trying to even it out, um, Atlas is, is fairly good. The uh, memory usage is a little bit more, but you get almost 2,000 more defense. Uh, excuse me, durability, a bit more defense. You do, I mean, the, the actual bullet and laser defense, they're both small. Never really worth, like, fighting for. Uh, the sight size is a bit wider on the Atlas. The lock on time is a little bit less on the Atlas. The lock on range is greater on Durandal, and the red detection range is much greater on Durandal as well. So it's more so, in that regard, a... A head that I prefer because I like to keep people at an arms at arm's length much further arm's length if you will but this one's very nice it has the defense it still has relatively decent stats in this regard and it'll get the job done now moving over to the arms. now this is where it gets very basic so in our right we're looking at right light two in our left we're looking at right light one the whole purpose for these is essentially to um, stun the enemy dual stunning potential i would probably if i had it run two right light ones doing parts of the memory uses being a little bit less the damage doesn't necessarily have to, the damage isn't a thing here that's not what we're going for we're going for the ability to stun so the stun potency is 235 on uh the riot light and it is again 235 on the other the only saving grace to riot light one is the memory usage not that that is only 20 memory usage but that goes a long way, and in case we need to have a backup weapon, which we do, it'll actually give us a little bit more greater um, flexibility with that. So, I mean, it's still fine. It's going to get the job done. Uh, both of these are, are fair. It's not like the, the world is going to be set on fire. It's still okay. But this is what we have. We're going to run two riot lights. So that way we can stun the opponent because that's the fun stuff. That's fun. And then, so that's right and left weapon. The shoulder weapon is going to be, honestly, my favorite laser cannon, the Gaia Ray. I've, I've been grinding for this weapon, and I have yet, yet to find a single other one outside of this one right here. So if anyone has like a three slot Gaia Ray, that's godlike. Anyway, uh, this one is great. It has high femto usage, it's power complex for its low ammo. So the purpose for this one is to really lay it down on your opponent. Like, if you can, you can just like. If you get them stunned, you'll be able to take them out really quickly. Because they're only stunned for about 2-3 seconds. With this one being a high damage one, it'll give you the more dam the damage necessary to actually put a lot of heavy power onto them. Like a lot of damage on them. And if you can time it right, use your uh, your assault on, on top of the, the laser cannon, you're going to lay down a lot of suppressive fire. I, if you can do this properly, you can kill an enemy with 2 stuns. 2 stuns, that, that's a dead guy. I've done that. 2 stuns dead guy i should really put more gameplay in these but gr uh, honestly i'm not gonna lie to you guys grinding with this set sucked because out of like all the fights i went into i only won two um i died a lot doing this that's when i learned that it was definitely a support set nevertheless that's where we're running there's another cannon which one is it i think it's this one you can also use this one if you like this one uses less uh femto but um, has a lot more energy capacity in the back, so it's really on you. You can choose whichever one you like. Uh, personally, I chose the Gaia Ray because it just kind of fits what I was going for uh, more often than not. But it's on you to, to choose what you want. Never, nevertheless, um, that's the... Oh, wait. Auxiliary is reserve magazine for the art cannon and a little bit more for the Gaia Ray, of course. Um, and the right pylon is a blade. I chose to use a laser blade. You can choose any other blade if you like. I just chose a laser blade. Honestly, I didn't really put a lot of stock into these blades. I just, the, if I were to run a blade, I just went for something that wasn't high on the memory usage. My preferred blade is probably a hobby or even, uh, where is he? Hold on. 
dead serious kernels break but not enough memory capacity but uh, you could just put a blade on there I feel like a blade is a very safe bet especially when you run out of bullets the other one is a submachine gun is that what they're called it's a submachine gun a machine gun whatever I chose to use this one because it's fine it could either be a submachine gun or, or an assault rifle just a weapon so that way when a, a monster when a, an opponent does get out of range you can still reach out and grab them with actual bullet fire until they get closer and then you can trap them with the stunning but essentially guys that's the build um i hope you guys find it not necessarily a great one but just something to have in the laying in the cut when you're running your 2v2s it's good to have a little support build that has a little bit of a gimmick to it it keeps the opponent thinking you know what i mean because i mean you're not going to win all the time but they're never going to know they're never not going to think that you're going to come at them with something like this so that was the whole purpose of this build but with that being said, everyone, thanks so much for watching. It's been your boy, Dak908. Of course, if you guys have any other build ideas you want me to tackle, please, please, please do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. With that being said, it's been your boy. Take care.